Kai Havertz leaving. Bah! That's not happening anytime soon. Gabriel Martinelli, meanwhile, has been linked with a move to Barcelona. And in the Champions League, one of the key favourites for the competition has taken an almighty loss. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8am UK time. It's Thursday, which means it's nearly the weekend. It also means that it is just one week away from our TGT live event in London. I have to say I've got a spare ticket going. If anyone wants to drop me a message, someone let me know that they've got a spare ticket. So let me know. DMs are open on socials if you want to get involved. You'd have to be quick, I think. Uh, so if you're going to message me in a few hours' time, it's probably gone. Um, but uh, you have to be quick if you want it. Uh, but good morning to those joining us. Uh, please do drop a like on the video and help us to our 1K every day challenge uh, that of course we continue to try and push through with. Uh, thank you to those that dropped a like on yesterday's show. We just got there. Uh, we nearly slacked. It nearly slacked off a little bit yesterday. Um, and so I always feel like when it when it doesn't quite tip over the the 1.1, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to remind them. I'm going to have to remind them in the morning. And so this is me reminding you, make sure you drop a like on the video before you do anything else. Good morning to Matt G, to Amira, to The Process, Guna, Jake, Angela, Paul, Shari, Jalali, Tom, uh, Glenn, Clincy, Dave, Martin, Louis. Uh, other Martin, Dellen, Pika Who, uh, AB, Damien, Carl, Tabani, uh, Josh, uh, Temi, and plenty more of you guys and girls as well. Thank you so much, as always, people, for tuning in. It is very much uh, appreciated. And uh, yeah, shall we jump straight into today's stories? I think that we should. Of course, please make sure you go back and catch up on yet another show I've done. I've done loads of this week. We did, obviously, the. What did we do on. Did we do something specific on Tuesday? I think we did. Um, for some reason, I'm now forgetting what we've done. Um, but of course, on uh, yes, Tuesday, we did. I was thinking Monday. We didn't do anything on Monday evening. But Tuesday, I was joined by Laura and Sophie, of course, to talk about um, the treatment of women in football. Yesterday, I was joined by the legend, which is Andrew from Ask Blog, to talk about some big Arsenal questions that are going on in the world right now. And then tonight, you've got another show, another one, because tonight we're going to be doing our ticket and atmosphere phone-in show. So for those that have experienced difficulties with getting tickets, those that are concerned about the atmosphere and have ideas about how we can solve it, we're going to have a very open and honest, frank discussion tonight about that with you. So if you are passionate about that topic, uh, make sure you tune in at 5 p.m. UK time for probably a two-hour phone-in looking at the uh, the finer details of uh, the tickets and atmosphere. So make sure you do tune in a little bit later on today for that. Uh, now, Jonas Idaval has eased the pressure somewhat on him after the women's team won in the uh, Conti Cup and uh, won 4-0 uh, with a really important win against London City. Um, a 4-0 victory, which saw Chloe Lacasse get a couple of goals, Kim Little uh, in the side and scoring a penalty, and Alessia Russo coming on in the second half and getting a goal as well, which is um, certainly going to be a, a boost uh, to what has been a very difficult um, kind of period the last, well, the last couple of weeks uh, with that loss against West Ham and then the defeat in the FA Cup as well, of course, very frustrating. And now Arsenal embark on a very, very tricky run of fixtures because we've got um, we've got Manchester United at home and then we've got Tottenham at home. Then we've then got a game against Aston Villa in the FA WSL Cup semi-final and then we've got Chelsea uh, away from home. So a really tricky run of games coming up that could be pretty much season-defining uh, for Jonas Eideval. So let's hope and keep fingers crossed that the form can be recovered and that we can continue to push on and do well in these tournaments. Moving forwards and looking back at yesterday's Champions League action, uh, Bayern Munich losing in their game against Lazio. Shiro Immobile with the only goal of the game from the penalty spot as Deo Upamecano was sent off. Thomas Tuchel under incredible pressure all of a sudden. Uh, I would still expect Bayern to turn this around in Munich in a couple of weeks' time or a few weeks' time. But uh, for now, 
that is a damning result uh, once again after their defeat against Bayer Leverkusen at the weekend, of course, as well. And they will be without Upamecano, of course, for the second leg too. Meanwhile, in Paris, uh, PSG eased to a pretty comfortable 2-0 win against Real Sociedad. Soci uh, La Real, of course, without Kieran Tierney at the moment, who is currently injured. But uh, Kylian Mbappe once again on the score sheet. Uh, and not only that, but Barcola scoring his first Champions League goal I think of the season so far as well. So uh, an impressive win for PSG and a very impressive victory for Lazio, who haven't had the strongest of uh, Serie A seasons by any stretch of the imagination either. Now moving to more transfer-related news, Pedro Neto will leave Wolves in the summer. A report by The Sun claims that the Portuguese international, amongst all the links to the likes of Arsenal, Spurs, Chelsea, I think even City have been linked, he will be leaving the club in the summer. It just depends about who is going to be getting their hands on Neto is the big question. Of course, I know we've had a few discussions and debates about whether Neto would be the right choice. His injury record is for some too much of an obstacle to justify moving for him. But uh, he is a very talented player. And if you can keep him fit, he would provide brilliant competition in the Arsenal front three. Meanwhile, uh, I've reported yesterday doing some digging around that story. I had a couple of people tweet me saying, Tom, can you give us some updates upon this this Kai Havertz story that's doing around? Apparently, he's not, or he's apparently Arsenal were exhausted uh, with him, was claims that came out, I think, from Spain initially a couple of days ago. We're well, doing some digging and writing this story. I can tell you that these are rubbish. Um, Kai Havertz is not leaving Arsenal. Uh, the club are not exhausted with him, and he's actually a very popular figure around the club. Mikel Arteta trusts him, and that's demonstrated by the amount of games that he's played throughout the course of this season, the amount of starts that he's had, and the amount of games that he's actually been picked ahead of some other players like Eddie Nketiah or uh, Leandro Trossard or Emil Smith-Rowe or even some other key stars as well. Arteta is very much uh, dedicated to the success of the Kai Havertz project and story. And uh, yes, I was glad to bring you that news yesterday on Football.London. So if you want to read the full uh, piece, please make sure you go and give that a read over on the Football.London website. And lastly, our headline story of the day, another potential key Arsenal star being linked with an exit. This time it's Gabriel Martinelli. According to Mundo Deportivo, the outlet in Spain, another outlet in Spain, Barcelona are said to be interested in signing the Brazilian international. I mean, I don't know where they're going to get all the money from. Uh, at the moment, they're kind of dealing with the fact they're trying to sell players, let alone sign players. Martinelli haven't just signed a brand new contract, of course. How on earth they're ever going to afford him? Uh, how on earth they're going to convince him to leave Arsenal for Barcelona as well makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, but that is the link coming out of Mundo Deportivo yesterday. Uh, if Arsenal were to sell the player, it would be a huge amount of money that would be required to get him through the door. Um, there has to be a conversation, I think, sometimes as well, you know, about Arsenal as a club, Arsenal where they're going. Will Arsenal ever sell some of their biggest stars so that they can then upgrade upon them to get even better players? Is Martinelli in that category? I think that's an interesting question to discuss. I mean, if you get hundred plus million pounds for Martinelli and you can invest that in a player that you think is better, is that worth doing? Right now, not for me. Martinelli is certainly a key starter in this team and a key part of the Arsenal future as well. And I look forward to seeing him continue to flourish and grow and develop and improve throughout his time with the club. Speaking of time, it's running out for you to get your hands on a ticket for Football Prizes competition to win a signed and framed Ian Wright shirt. Uh, there is just a handful of tickets left in the competition and less than 12 hours remain for you to get a ticket in the competition as well tomorrow i'll hopefully be bringing you news of a brand new prize that will be available as well so make sure you tune in tomorrow to find out what the next big prize is going to be and if you've entered the competition i wish you the best of luck it is a uk only competition so make sure that you get involved and uh and best of luck to those of course that have as well right let's go to part two and your questions right after this Okay, then. Uh, let's jump into the chats. But uh, I should remind you, because I always forget in the start of the second half, I need to tell you to please do like the video, people. We need to try and get that 1K every day going. So if you haven't already dropped that like, please make sure that you do. For some reason, I can't spell the word every 
There we go. That's much better. That's right. Yeah, there we are. Um, do make sure you drop a like on the video before you do anything else because it really does help us out and it pushes towards that daily target. If you're listening on audio platforms, you are appreciated as well. But please hop over to the YouTube and drop a like on the video. I also received an email about a very kind iTunes review as well, which was always nice to, to read um, when you guys do leave the uh, reviews on on itunes it is it's nice to read them back it brings a sense of justification um this person left a review saying i absolutely love this podcast i tried many arsenal podcasts but this is by far the best one for me so thank you to whoever it was um that left that five star review on itunes if you'd like to help us out you can do that as well and if you listen on spotify make sure you drop a five star rating on the show too right then uh, let's jump into the chat, shall we? Derek says, Tom, watch your squad when everyone returns, team and subs, and anyone 90% ready to be held off until Newcastle, Partey, Zinni, uh, Jesus, and Tommy. Um, I think Tommy will be back for this weekend against Burnley. Whether he starts is another question. Uh, there was training images released yesterday. He wasn't in them. Neither was any of those players that you've mentioned, but they are obviously very, very cautious about who is involved in those photos. Um, the, the, the 11, the best 11, I think, that we've got, if everybody is fully fit, is uh, Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Timber, uh, Partey, Rice, Erdegaard, Saka, Jesus, and uh, Martinelli. But I think, you know, Havertz is, is going to be pushing up there with that centre-forward position. But at the moment, the bench would therefore be Ramsdale, um, Kivior, uh, Tomiyasu, Zinchenko, um, Jorginho, Smithrow, Fabio Vieira, Kai Havertz, Leandro Trossard would be it. That means there's no room for Enketia or Nelson. That means there's no room for Elneny or Cedric. That means there's no room. Am I forgetting anyone else? There's no room for either, but I think that would be the team. So, yeah, that's amazing. When everyone's fit, some there's some big players that are being left out. Rather interestingly, so unless I've forgotten someone major. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think you have to have the three defenders of Kivi or Tomiyasu and Zinni. And then Jorginho, Smith, Rowe, Vieira, and then Trossard, Havertz. And uh, I think there's one more that I've, I've forgotten about as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think there's, there is. And it shows you what we've got to do in the summer is if we, play, if we bring players in, there's going to be some players that are going to be going. There's going to be some players that we talked about there that might be leaving. And that's why I can actually see Kivior as a potential exit. He's been linked, of course, with a number of uh, Italian sides. And when you look at it when everyone's fit, it's going to be... Interesting, but as Damien here says, when everyone's fit, that's never going to happen. <laughs> it's also very true. The likelihood is that we won't have everybody fit at all at the same time. Uh, Lee says, um, Lee Highbury Hall says, Tom, I was surprised to find out that Arsenal refused to sell David Dean's autobiography when published last year in the Arsenal shop, seeing what he's done for Arsenal. Do you think this is right? Um, I don't know that for sure, Lee. Um, let me do a quick check. Uh, David Dean, Arsenal shop. Uh, if it's not going to come up, ah, here we go. It's an article by uh, The Sun uh, that says, um, it disappoints me terribly. Arsenal snubbed David Dean as they refused to stock former Chiefs book in the club store. I'd, I'd have to know the reasons as to why. I mean, and I'm sure they they had a reason. I mean, if they're not, they must have surely have a good reason. But I don't know what that reason is, Lee. But uh, until I find out what the other side of the story is, I'll probably hold back on on passing judgment, if that makes sense. It's always important to get all the facts. Uh, Frank says, Tom, do you think Zinchenko is still the ideal left back for Arsenal, given his defensive issues? Uh, well, in my ideal team, Yuri and Timber, I think is the best of, of both worlds. Um, so I think that for that reason, Zinchenko is not the ideal left back, because otherwise I'd be putting him in my best team. But I still think he's a very, very good option for us as well. Um, Darren says, Neto is a popular target, but would Takafusa Kubo be an alternative to consider? Uh, Kubo, of course, Japanese international, um, currently continuously uh, moving around uh, on, or rather had been continuously moving around on loan until he signed permanently for Real Sociedad. He's got 15 goals in 54 league games since signing for them this season. He's got six goals uh, in 19 league games for Real Sociedad. Uh, I don't know if he's Darren the, of the required level. I think that there are other players like Nico Williams, for instance, which I like more um, than Takafusa Kubo personally. They're of a similar age. Williams 21, Kubo 22. I just think Williams' versatility is is more and style is more akin for me than 
than what Kubo's is. The pace is something that I really like. Chris says he'd rather Javi Simmons instead of Neto as well. Javi Simmons, of course, very versatile, can play as an attacking midfielder as well as a wide player too. Maybe he would fit into that eight role as well. Something to to think about. In terms of centre forwards, I have written an article that's gone out this morning. You would have seen it on my personal Twitter feed at Tom Canton Media, um, talking about how I have, I think, rested my hat on the Victor Goyacorez uh, kind of hat stand, if you like, um, as, as my current pick for who I would like to see Arsenal go for in the striker market. He has a €100 million Euro release clause, which is about £85 million, pounds, which any striker scoring the amount of goals that he's currently scoring, which, by the way, is the most of any player in Europe's top five leagues. He has 20, um, sorry, goal contributions wise, he has 38 goal contributions in 20 nine games uh rather ridiculously so he for me i think stands out as the uh as the one to get at the moment he's got 11 assists and and 28 goals or 27 goals and 11 assists amazing tally creative player as well as being a, a really good goal scorer offers something physically and aerially to us as well so i think at the moment if i was to have anybody i think victor goyacarez would be the striker that i'm going for um Brentford, uh, Phil Ed says Brentford just signed a forward for the summer. It's clear Tony is leaving and would bet my money that it's with us, unfortunately. I, if Tony ends up coming to Arsenal, as I have maintained, he wouldn't be my personal choice. But if he joins Arsenal, I will be back in the guide to the hill and hoping that he succeeds. That is for sure. Uh, Alistair says, I really like Neto. and would be perfect for Arsenal, but his injuries do worry me. Uh, I'd go and get Bowen, although he would be very expensive. Yes, he would be very very, very, very expensive. Um, Chun Ho says, I've just joined late and I've seen that Barca are interested in Martinelli. Maybe we can do a swap deal for their TV rights and stadium name. Imagine the camp now being Camp Arsenal. <laughs> uh, Wegbu says, Mbappe is free. Let's negotiate and get him. Cedric Nelson, Eddie Lacongo, and El Neni Kamar. El Neni twice. Um, no, sorry, not El Neni twice. I don't know why El Neni I thought was said twice. Eddie and El Neni. Command's close to 400k a week. If we sell them and top it up with 300k a week, we can pay Mbappe close to 700k a week. Yeah, it doesn't work like that, mate. I'm sorry. I know where you're coming from. And it doesn't add up to 400k a week at all. El Neni's on about 60, uh, 60k. Cedric's on about 75. Nelson's uh, close to 100. Eddie close to 100, if not 100. Lukonga's on, you know, I think quite a low wage as well. Um, it's it's just not as simple as that. Just because you get rid of those players off the wage when you replace them with one, it it's not a case of taking away and adding. It's about your wage structure. Uh, he also would command a wage, I think, more than that. I think when you add it all up, it's getting close to like a million a week. I was looking at the figures the other day about what his additional wage command could be. So, yeah, very, very difficult. It doesn't sadly work that way um, in regards to that because the thing is that if you're moving on all those players, they're all players in the squad, meaning that you have to replace those players in the squad still. So you've got depth. And if you're adding those players, if you're replacing those players, you want to replace them with level of quality, you're going to probably be playing players that are of the same kind of wage bracket, if not more anyway. So People say we need to improve on Nelson. We need to improve on Eddie. We need to improve on Cedric and improve on Elneny's depth. And if you do that, you're going to be paying players similar or more anyway. So I know on paper it's like get rid of these guys, open up the money for Mbappe. But you can't just have a <laughs> you can't just have a six player hole in a 25 man squad. Uh, you have to replace them. Um, and of course, the signing on fee for Mbappe is also worth thinking about too. So he might be a free transfer with no transfer fee but there are other costs involved it is not as simple as that uh, namdo says mbappe is uh, egotistical and a financial nightmare dare to dream sure but it's so improbable you're better off keeping it to yourself it's not worth a discussion between grown-ups uh nick says mbappe isn't free they will want a massive signing on bonus because he knows there isn't a transfer fee exactly um, Fred says, I'd love Goya Carez, Tom, but I don't think Sporting will sell unless we activate the 100 million release clause. Would you still do it? At the moment, yes. Because I think that if you're going to sign a striker of that age, 25, um, if you're signing a player that's the idea of scoring 20 plus goals in this day and age, in this market, you're going to be spending close to 80 odd million quid, if not more. Uh, I mean, Ozerman's going to cost you well upwards of 100 million. He's not scored as many goals as Goya Carez has this season, of course. Yes, he's playing in a, a trickier league for sure, but still the numbers he's producing the Swedish international are rather crazy. So I think I would, you know, 
I think I would. I think I would activate that uh, 100 million euro release clause. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jabu says, Tom, would you rather have Xavi Simmons and Tony in the summer or lose both for Mbappe? I don't think it's as simple as that, Jabu. So it's difficult to do that. I'd take Mbappe, of course. Um, but financially, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, Mr. Happy, Coventry sold him for about 18 million pounds. It's 24 million euros. So 18 to 20 million pounds. I think they sold him for amazing amount of profit they'll make on that potential deal. Yomi says, what if Goroka is a one season wonder We, you know, Ivan Tony has had one good season really in the premier league when he scored the 20 goals last year, the season before that he scored seven non penalty goals. Um, so if we're talking about players being one season wonders at the moment, Ivan Tony's only given us one great season. Um, we're still f so far yet to see, um, another great season from him to justify, at the top, top level uh, to justify that move as well. Uh, Frank says, I don't think Arsenal is truly linked to Pedro Neto. I personally don't see him succeeding in Arsenal given his injury woes. I still can't believe we missed out on Kudus. I can tell you, Frank, that Arsenal are interested in Pedro Neto. doesn't mean that they will sign him, of course, but he certainly is a player that Arsenal are looking at. Um, Ishitake says, who is your second favourite team after Arsenal? I only support one team, which of course is Arsenal. I like some others. Um, Rebel Salzburg I have my uh, liking for because obviously of have, have previously watching them quite a lot and players like Dominic Zoboslai, of course, and other players playing for them as well that I've really enjoyed watching and, and come through the ranks. Erling Haaland, of course, there as well. My missus team is is Charlton, so I always look out for them and, and hope they're doing well. Gillingham being my, my dad's team as well, I look out to see how they're doing also. Um, but uh, I only support uh one team which is which is arsenal uh mess raf says 100 million euros and likely have to pay it all at once tony isn't a one season wonder tom come on i mean you're factually wrong raf <laughs> he's only had one great season at the premier league level i wouldn't describe seven non-penalty goals as, as a great season at all and uh yes he's got a couple of goals this season but he's not he's not necessarily really impressed me since coming back um i have to say he's not necessarily like stunned me and it'll be you know what how old will he be when we if we were to sign him 28 um in the summer uh when we were able to bring him through the doors but he is uh 27 till he turns 28 remember the rules that's how it works but in the summer he would be 28 um and a lot of money so yeah and uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to pay a release clause all at once no that's not always how it works uh practica says the tactics of domination that we've seen in recent weeks are arteta's preferred approach and I seriously think spreading the goals around is a better strategy than having a target man. Um, I think what's interesting about that, Pratika, is that we dominated against Liverpool with a target man, with the Kai Havertz role being played in that position. And I often think that it's quite, I'm not saying that you're doing this, um, but I'm not saying that just because you have a tall, like, I think it's sometimes a bit lazy to say that if you have a taller player up top, they're naturally a target man. And Gorkarez is a fantastically technically gifted player as well as being of the taller um, bracket of forwards as well. So it's very, very difficult to, uh, to, to just label players target men just because they're taller. You know, I don't think of Erling Haaland necessarily as a classic target man. He's got brilliant pace and speed and power and finishing ability that he doesn't have to play as a target man. He can play with the ball on the floor very comfortably as well. Oh, the TGT sneeze. Sorry, getting me there. Um, let's go to Simon Says. What is the situation with Frimpong? He's such a good young right back, and I think he would fit into the right back position very well, especially combining with Saka and a 40 million euro release clause seems cheap. Does he have a release clause of 40 million? That seems very low. Um, Arsenal's interest in him, it does not necessarily exist uh, anywhere close to what it used to. Um, I I don't think they're looking at him at the moment. The last I heard that he was he he'd kind of gone off the radar a bit, and that's probably because of the position, the role he's playing now as a wing back. He doesn't really fit what we do at that in that position. Great player, but he doesn't really fit what we do in that right back position. Um, Culture Mark says, greetings, Tom. Is there any news of Charlie Patino? Do you think he'll still be considered for the squad next season? Great show as always. Thanks, mate. Um, Patino's not really getting too many minutes at the moment for Swansea. He's kind of fallen out of the frame there, which is a frustration. Uh, I think that 
there's been a lot of pressure put on him and a lot of expectation put on him. I don't see him making it at Arsenal. I think he will probably be sold in the summer. Um, so, yeah, I, I think so. Raf says, do you... You can't discount penalty goals. You absolutely can, and I do, because penalties are something which are basically like bonuses on the top of your uh, your goal tally. I don't look at them as, as something to measure a player's worth. I always, always do non-penalty XG. I always look at how a non-penalty goal striker compares elsewhere because it's so important to look at the non-penalty aspects because Arsenal don't get loads of penalties. We get a few, and Saka takes them. You know, Tony comes in, he's not taking them. Jorginho's coming, he doesn't take them. Saka takes them, you know. So he's not going to get those penalty goals here. So I have to look at non-penalty goals and their ability on the ball and what they bring outside of penalties. And six goals from penalties last season, which took his tally up to 20 from 14, is a big jump. It's more than a quarter of the goals he scored last season were from penalties. So you have to look at that when looking at the comparison. His age, you have to look at the price, you have to look at... The record off field, you have to look at not the betting stuff, by the way. I'm talking about other things that I don't particularly like his demeanor and how he's spoken about Brentford publicly. There's a lot of reasons why I'm not too keen on on Ivan Tony compared to a lot of other centre forwards. But yeah, absolutely I discount penalties. I, I certainly always look at non penalty goals and non penalty XG when looking at comparison stats between players because that is just for me the better way forwards. Um and, and GC says, what's the probability that we sign Goya Carez? I, I don't know of any interest, by the way, at the moment. He's not necessarily been linked with us. He's just my personal pick if uh, um, uh, if, if we were to go to a centre forward. I think he would be the one I would go for. Um, Ian Wallace says, Tony has a proper cult following, doesn't he? Uh, you're allowed to believe that we can get better than him. It's not an insult. He just doesn't wow most people. And I think that's probably a really fair comment. He doesn't wow me. He doesn't wow plenty of other people. Um, he scored goals in the Premier League and I think of the investment that it would cost to get him in. He do, he's not, I don't think he's any better than what we've already got. I don't think he pushes the needle. I don't think he closes the gap. I hope he'd prove me wrong if we signed him. I really do. I really hope he would, I really hope he would prove me wrong and I'll hold my hands up as I always do when I'm proven wrong. But at the end of the day, I just think, don't think I'd see him. And by the way, I, 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 what I would say is that all of the talk about Tony and Arsenal, it has quietened a bit recently um so i'm not necessarily thinking that he is going to be the one at the moment but it has somewhat quietened around him uh, wade says mika Bireth, i like him i think he can develop into a really good player um you think signing someone too young will block him uh, he's currently away at Sturmgratz. he scored on his debut he scored in a friendly as well he started in their massive game against salzburg last friday when they drew 1-1 in the austrian title race i'm going to be doing a little bit of an update on him for football.london in a couple of weeks time with somebody i know that watches plenty more austrian football than i do um i don't necessarily think that he has a future at arsenal but let's just see let's see if he continues to improve as well um Roscoe says, speaking of time, it's running out for you. Thanks, Tom. What? <laughs> That's so weird. I said, what? What does that even mean? Uh, Kaka says, I think Tony will come cheaper. It won't cost 100 million because most financial stable teams don't need a striker except from nowhere else. Uh, it comes in. Um, I think it will be cheaper, but I don't think uh, Arsenal would be the only team going after Tony. So that would jump the price up somewhat as well. Uh, Ian says, how did Zubamendi perform against PSG last night? I don't know. I was uh, I was watching something else, uh, Ian, so I didn't see it. I'll probably be catching up on Zubamendi's performance in uh, the Wire Scout clips a little bit later on today, but uh, I I wasn't watching that game, so I can't. I couldn't tell you in good knowledge. Um, Baza says, that sounded like a death threat. It did, didn't it? Wow. Roscoe, I think you need to respond, mate. Time's running out. <laughs> I don't know what I even mean. I feel like I've seen the name before. Goodness gracious. Was that my that was my segue, wasn't it, into part two? I'm sure it was. Maybe Roscoe is watching on a delay because <laughs> that came across incredibly insidious for a moment. Goodness gracious. I'm going to go to the front door. There's going to be a horse's head outside. Uh, Nacho says, hey, Tom, what positions do you think we need to recruit for cover in the summer? I personally think we need one centre-back, cover for Saka, and they may be an additional forward if Nketiah leaves as well. Uh, I think we need a forward. I think we need a midfielder. I think we need a defender. I think we maybe need a wide player. I think four signings would be really good. I think potentially a goalkeeper if Ramsdale leaves as well. That's certainly something to look at also. 
Um, let's go to uh, MM says, De Jong is the one. Is Frankie De Jong the player? He's also come out, by the way, and uh, kind of rubbish those claims um, of him being linked with an exit from Barca. So just be aware of that as well. Uh, the process says, when uh, will we get a stage where no player is off limits for us? I guess when we start winning leagues and things like that. You know, when we reach the level of City, that's when you have a position or you become, you, you move into a place where you absolutely have no limits on who you can and, and cannot sign. That's that's difficult. Uh, SC Dave says, Tom, why don't any channels ever remind people of Kai's fee uh, being spread across three years? In other words, we only gave Chelsea 21 million up front. I mean, it's, it's not even that. It's actually spread across five years because of amortization, Dave. Um, because he signed a five year contract, amortization means that 65 million is spread across those five years on the books. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's actually not anywhere near close to as what, but obviously, he's always going to be seen as a 65 million pound player. So, that's that's why it's tricky. Um, Let's go to Alistair Ben says, if we get Zabamendi, do you think Arteta may try him as an inverted role at fullback? I, I mean, that'd be kind of mad, wouldn't it? But he's done it with Partey. So I guess you have to always be open to that. Uh, Nexus says, Tom, Arteta is looking at a striker that's similar to Jesus out of the strikers we've been linked to. Who fits that profile better? I think I've already given you the answer, mate. Goya Carez, 28 goals, 11 assists this season. He's got it all. Uh, E5 Curb says, have you spoken about the new youth hire that we got from Rangers? The club's new direction in the youth system. So there's a lot still going on with Arsenal uh, and their youth system. They are trying to improve things a lot. There's some suggestions and rumours that they'll be looking to invest quite heavily in um, their youth academy. Um, but I'm trying to see the person that it was. Um, but uh, I saw someone, was it Nigel? That Nigel guy on Twitter saying Mason Munn is a primary target at 17 for immediate integration at Colney. Phil Cohen, key to key to the relationship from Rangers. Is it Phil Cohen? Is that the guy? Um, I can't say I know too much about it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not in my remit, mate, I'm afraid. Uh, let's go to Matt G who says, we don't need to talk about midfield signings. As many has already said goodbye to his current team. <laughs> Those links were hilarious. Uh, Harold says, thoughts on changing Odegaard and Rice for captain? Don't do it because we have absolutely no need to. Odegaard's been a fantastic captain for us. Um, Abbe says, Kai's 65 million, only 50 million were guaranteed, right? Rest of them are add-ons. People never talk about the add-ons. I think it was 5 million, though, in add-ons. I think it was 60 plus 5, not 650 plus 15. I think it was 60 plus 5. Uh, Answer says, with rumours that Newcastle need to sell one of their good players to be able to do business, would you go for Bruno Gimaraes? Uh, no, I'd go for Alexander Isak. He's actually another one of the centre forwards that I'd I'd be looking at to to sign as well. So I think I'd choose Isak over Gimaraish would be my choice. Uh, right, there's nearly a thousand of you watching. Thank you so much. Please do drop a like on the video and help us get to 1K every day before you leave. Uh, I'll be back at five o'clock to have a phone-in show with you if you want to tune in and jump on and have your say about the atmosphere at the Emirates Stadium, about the ticket situation as well. I'm having a very open and honest conversation getting some thoughts from people um, about their experiences with the ballot, you know, the experiences with the ticket process. I want to hear from you. I want to get your thoughts. I want to question some of those thoughts as well. So 5 p.m. UK time, we'll be doing that phone-in show. So make sure that you tune in for that. Uh, have a fantastic Thursday. I hope you enjoyed Valentine's Day yesterday and had a lovely time. And uh, we now look ahead to Arsenal's game against Burnley on the weekend. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Have a great day. See you soon. Stay well. Stay healthy. Stay happy and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>